Welcome to Ms. Mojo. For this list, we're looking at performers who drastically changed their voice and or accent for a role on the small screen. My immune system is too weak to fight off my small muscles. Number 10, Katherine O'Hara, Schitt's Creek. A former wealthy soap star, Moira Rose still has the sensibilities of a one percenter, despite having lost all her money. This wine is awful. Give me another glass. Her usual manner of speaking is noticeably deeper and more prim and proper than Catherine O'Hara's. This adds to the character's eccentricities, since it gives the impression that her voice is an affectation, even when she's trying to appear warm and friendly. Fall so graciously welcomed us into your heavenly hamlet. O'Hara, on the other hand, comes across as super approachable and down to earth. I'm sorry I wasn't name dropping, I was it's just good. telling the no. truth. The fact that she can sell this snobby upper class character so well is just proof of her greatness. Let's go. I've had enough waking hours for one day. Number 9. John Barrowman, Doctor Who and Torchwood If you've only seen American interviews with Barrowman, you might be wondering why he's on this list. His best-known character, Captain Jack Harkness, might be a product of British television, but he sounds decidedly American. Woke up in bed with both my executioners. Hmm, lovely couple. They stayed in touch. Can't say that about most executioners. And so does Barrowman most of the time. Although he was born in Scotland, he moved to the States when he was only eight years old, and his typical accent is an unremarkable Midwestern one. So Captain Jack changed my life. It was also a character who changed the face of television. As a result, however, when he finds himself among his fellow Scots, he reverts to his native Scottish dialect, and the difference is stark. This is how I speak at home. Yes. When I'm with other Scottish people, it just happens. It's like being bilingual. Okay, so this is a phenomenon referred to as being bidialectal, which is when someone who grew up around two different accents can switch between them depending on which one they hear. And it's very cool. I can't tell you what I'm thinking right now. Number 8. Idris Elba, The Wire. By now, Idris Elba is famous enough that most people probably know he sounds nothing like his character Stringer Bell in real life. That's like a 40 degree day. Ain't nobody got nothing to say about a 40 degree day. But when The Wire first hit airwaves, Elba wasn't such a big name, and many fans had no idea that his native dialect is quite different from the ruthless Baltimore crime bosses. Elba actually grew up in an inner borough of London, and his natural English accent has been said to be almost close to Cockney. Your American <laughs> accent has not always been that good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I have heard you. My insides are constricting for you right now. I, I, no. I don't know what's going oh, on. Oh, you do. He's also not the only Brit pretending to be a Baltimorean on The Wire. His co-star, Dominic West, hails from Yorkshire. And unlike many English actors, his voice gets higher pitched when playing his American character. We got bosses that wouldn't know police work if it bit him in the ass. Number 7. Stephanie Beatrice, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Rosa Diaz is the quintessential no-nonsense, hard-nosed detective. Many of her colleagues are intimidated by her, and she has a somewhat deep, serious voice to fit her personality. Plans are plans. I'm a badass, not an anarchist. Stephanie Beatrice's natural pitch, on the other hand, is much more high to moderate. I really loved the character. I wore all black. I wore my black leather jacket. I wore my black boots. But diehard fans might have noticed that Rosa's voice evolved over the course of the series. In season one, it was only slightly deeper than Beatrice's ordinary speaking voice. Looks like the perp stole a computer, a watch, and a jamon iberico ham valued at, what, $6,000. In later seasons, her pitch dropped considerably, to the point that by the show's end, Beatrice and her character sound like completely different people. Yeah, we know that. We're just surprised that you know that. Number 6. Pedro Pascal, Game of Thrones Many people assume that the Chilean-born actor naturally speaks with a Spanish accent. It's not an absurd idea, considering that he sometimes uses one. I am Javi. But Pascal actually grew up in California and Texas, and his native accent is pretty standard American. Yeah, I feel kind of Texan, actually. Yeah. Oberyn Martell was the first Dornish character to appear on Game of Thrones, so Pascal played an important role in determining what the people of the fictional Dorn would sound like going forward. And after I turn set, I grow angry. Since he grew up in a family of Spanish speakers, it makes sense that this accent is the one that comes easily to him. It is a big and beautiful world. Most of us live and die in the same corner where we were born and never get to see any of it. I don't want to be most of us. Number 5. Maggie Wheeler, Friends. Oh. My. God. If you know Friends, then you know Janice, Chandler's mostly ex-girlfriend whose surprise reappearances eventually become a running joke. Oh. 
my God. Janice's most distinctive feature is her voice. Loud, nasally, and extremely New York. It'd probably be pretty grating to listen to in real life, but her voice, along with her famous catchphrase, made her into one of the most beloved recurring characters on the series. Okay, I'm gonna need a comforter, but do you have a hypoallergenic one? Because otherwise I get very nasal. Although Wheeler drew inspiration for Janice from the New Yorker she grew up around, her real voice couldn't be more different. Really, I heard her. I knew who she was to me. It's almost jarring to hear it coming out of that familiar face. That's fine. <laughs> it is? Mm-hmm. Because I know that this isn't the end. Number 4. Melissa Rauch, The Big Bang Theory Bernadette Rostenkowski Wallowitz's high pitch and usually sweet intonation seem to fit with Rauch's diminutive stature. Gosh, Amy, I'm sensing a little hostility. Is it maybe because, like Sheldon's work, your sex life is also theoretical? That's one reason it's always surprising and hilarious when she suddenly belts out a line like Howard's mother. In fact, the voice and the character have become so intertwined that fans sometimes don't recognize the actress when she's speaking in her natural tone. Bernadette's voice is very similar to my mother's, um, except without the Jersey accent. It turns out that Rouch is a bit of a vocal chameleon. She's done voice work for a number of animated shows and films, and even brought Harley Quinn to life alongside the incomparable Kevin Conroy. Harley, there are lives at stake. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, the whole world's gonna flux. I get it, I get it. Number three, Hugh Laurie, House. Laurie became fairly well known on the British comedy scene as part of his two man act with Stephen Fry in the 80s. Some of you <laughs> may be wondering how my colleague came by this bandage upon his head. It's very simple a nurse put it on. But many Americans were first introduced to him as the brilliant yet caustic Dr. Gregory House. I think your argument is specious. I think your tie is ugly. He might be humble about his talent, but Laurie pulls off an American accent so flawlessly that lots of fans were shocked to discover he's actually British. House's voice is almost gravelly, while Laurie is a bit more soft-spoken with a polished and proper British dialect. I just felt like it had to be, you know, it had to be right. Yeah. Um, because it would get in the way if it wasn't right. It's almost hard to believe that both voices come from the same man. You can fake sincerity, you can fake pretty much anything. Number two, Andrew Lincoln, The Walking Dead. If you had told us in 2009 that Mark from Love Actually would totally nail the role of a Kentucky lawman in a gory zombie apocalypse show, we probably wouldn't have believed you. And yet that's exactly what happened. Gah! To portray Rick Grimes, Lincoln takes on an American accent with a light but noticeable twang, completely unlike his usual posh English speech. I would say it's a work in progress, but it's a work in progress, apparently. Uh -huh. Rick's voice also gets progressively more gruff over the course of the series, reflecting the trauma and violence he's lived through. Lincoln disappears so completely into the part, it's easy to forget what he really sounds like. That wasn't weakness. It took everything. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Megan Mullally, Will & Grace Her name might not have been in the title, but Karen stole this show so many times, maybe it should have been. He's a little nervous, he's a little nervous. Oh hell, I'm a little nervous. Thanks to Mullally's over-the-top performance and that impossibly squeaky voice, some of the funniest and most memorable moments come from when she's on screen. Oh my god. It's the end of me. I don't think I can go on. Of course, her real voice has a much more reasonable tone. Mullally admits that her risky acting choices haven't always paid off in the past. Either I would come in with this crazy character, with a crazy character, and I'd either not get cast or I'd get cast and then get fired or almost get fired or, <laughs> you know. Playing Karen with that absurdly high pitch was certainly taking a chance, but in the end, it's one of the things that made the character downright iconic. Hi, my name is Karen Walker. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.